Hi everyone, it's Robin, the Artsy Bohemian, coming to you from my studio in Los Angeles, California. I started working on a project, and I got really excited, and I kind of just started making more and more, and then I thought, well, I'll just turn on the camera and kind of show you what I'm doing. Nothing new, nothing, no new techniques. I just, I think it's going to be kind of a fun insert for a junk journal. That's basically why I started making it. So basically, what I'm going to show you is... I've had these envelopes from Stamping Up for uh, way too long. I just kept them because any of you who've worked for Stamping Up know that in all of the paperwork you had to buy yourself. And um, I knew someday I would use them. And they've come in handy just to store things, but basically they're just big envelopes. So you could do this when, with any large envelope. It's like a, it's bigger than a piece of paper. It's nine by 12. Um, <clears throat> And I'm going to collage on it, and then I'm going to paint, put some layers of paint with a brayer, and then do a, a drawing. My my concept was uh, inspired by Tony Burt, who I uh, who, who I've taken a class with online. She also has some uh, free YouTube tutorials, but I love her style. She made the the class I took was a uh, journal class to uh, make a journal to to sketch in. And um, the signatures were, you know, typical sig signatures. Uh, you could use watercolor paper, you know, whatever kind of paper you wanted. And I was getting ready to make it, and I thought, I don't really like having them stay in one place once they've been bound. So I came up with this as, as a, an, another idea of making envelopes into signatures and painting them and then using the top part to put my paintings if I put if I make any so that I can take them out if I wanted to so I'm going to show you what I did um, this is great because you'll be able to utilize all your scraps this is all scraps and you know we all save our scraps so you're going to need a pile of scraps I highly recommend you gather them before you start the project because then you'll have it ready and they'll be there You'll have a nice little pile and you won't get distracted by using too many things. So I'm going with neutral colors because honestly, when you lay this down, you, you're not going to worry about whether it's going to, you know, what it's going to look like in the end because you're going to be painting over it. It's going to be a light paint. You're still going to be able to see underneath, but <clears throat> don't get too caught up in making it look perfect because it's not going to look the same. It's not going to look like this unless you want it to just look like this. This is still, this still looks really cool. You're going to need an old credit card, a paintbrush, some water, some matte medium or something similar. You might be able to use a Mod Podge if that's all you have and um, some paper towels and maybe some other things, but that's all I can think of right now, but I think that's it. So what you're gonna do is, is you're going to take your envelope and you're gonna just kind of lay down some papers kind of where you might wanna put them and then we're going to glue them down basically with the matte medium. So these are just scraps that I've had from, you know, other projects. If you don't have a lot of scraps, uh, of course you can use whatever papers you want. I, um, you can even use something like this. This is uh, Tim Holtz. You can use napkins, you can use coffee dyed paper. In fact, I have a boo-boo. I mine this piece stuck to uh, the coffee pan or the cookie tin and um, so I'm going to use this for part of it probably. So I'm just going to start tearing some of these pieces. This is also Tim Holtz. I kind of like using transparent pieces in part of the the collage and kind of stick to rectangular shapes. And 
you know, tear pieces off so you get a nice feathered edge for those of you who haven't done collage before. This one already has. I do this on the corner. And I do leave a little bit of a border. I'm going to leave a little bit of a border around it. And you know, you can change this at any time. You don't need to keep it that way. I do really like the f the effect of uh, pattern paper because it looks like paint, like a, a tan colored paint. So I do really like that look. And so since you're doing these rectangle shapes, do them kind of cross hatch them. Don't don't line them all up perfectly if you want this effect. Again, it's you it's your thing. You can do whatever you want. Music paper is always good. Oops, I didn't want to cut through that. <clears throat> This literally should not take you more than 10 minutes to put this um, together. So um, now you're just going to start gluing them down. And you can see I did leave parts open because um, I liked the I liked the wording to show through. If you want, you can cover it every single inch if you want to. But uh, as I said in the beginning, it's going to be covered up by um, quite a bit of um paint so you'll see what i mean when we get to that point there's different kinds of matte medium uh this is the kind i have it's by nova color you can get golden you can use liquitex matte medium if you want And I'm going to start just using my paintbrush to put the matte medium down on the envelope. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a border. And this is where you're going to use your credit card to smooth out the paper. And if you didn't get it all the way, then just go ahead and put some more matte medium. And when I'm done laying all this down, I will go back over with uh, more matte medium on top. It does warp a little bit, uh, but um, that's okay. quite a bit down and then um, those of you who have used matte medium you know that it's kind of sticks to your finger so that's why I like having the um, paper towels so I can just keep wiping off with the credit card so you're just going to keep doing that A lot of uh, painters that I've taken classes with use this technique. Christy Tomlinson does this. Hers, her colors all, are a lot more vibrant. She uses really bright colors. I've done that too before, um, but I kind of wanted to keep it neutral because I, I'm going to be painting a um, kind of a fairy in these colors. Um, also, Gritty Jane, she does this technique with all of her paintings. 
where she lays down a collage and then paints over it. So it gives it this interesting texture that kind of makes you go, what's, what's underneath that painting? When I first started painting this way a few years ago, I would always think, well, why do they put that down and then just cover it up? But there is something to be said with the energy that goes into all of it. Uh, the more you work on a piece, the richer it, it becomes. And then you have all these amazing layers, even though you may not see them completely. So, oops, that's water. Lay down the pattern paper. And I will leave a link down below for uh, the Tony Burt classes. She's an Australian painter and I just really like her style. She has lots of online classes available. And I was attracted to this one in particular because it was an actual 3D thing to make, you know, on top of painting. Um, you, you, she shows you her technique to make a really cool journal to paint in. Paper's thick, like this old wallpaper's kind of thick. Really got to slather on the the medium. And the papers, pieces of paper that you put down don't need to be as small as what I'm doing. You could do four quadrants if you wanted to, four larger pieces. I'll just stick the card in my water to get the gunk off. This is cool using this technique, using the uh, card to pull the excess uh, glue, you know, medium off and flattens the piece. I think if you use something thicker like a gel, it's probably not going to warp as much, but I don't really mind. Plus, you could always flatten it. You can iron it when it's dry or, um, you know, put it under some weights if you really want it flat. You can also put it in the oven at a really, really, really low temperature for about five minutes. I don't know if it's going to flatten it all that much, but it'll make it dry faster. So it's, it's kind of cool because you can just I just started thinking, oh, I should just start collaging everything, all of the things that I have saved, all the boxes. It's just so fun because it's kind of freeing um, to do this technique. So uh, that's kind of why I wanted to show you. I just think it's kind of fun. And then even if you don't have uh, an end goal in mind, it's something you have that you can work with um, at another time if you want to for your next project.
also um, Kelly Ray Roberts uh, does this all the time with her paintings. It's kind of like an underpainting, so to speak, with collage papers. Same thing, a lot of it doesn't show once she's painted over it because she does uh, really bright colors and really beautiful uh, paintings. But um, there is little pieces of it peeking in behind and it kind of, it's very intriguing to see um, and kind of guess what's, what's underneath, you know? Just adds more depth. Do a light coat on the top. I don't know if that's actually necessary, but um, if you are going to paint it and any part of it's showing, you want to have a nice surface to paint on, even though we will be putting paint on. It's going to be random paint, though. It's not going to be full coverage. And then we'll just let it dry, and then I'll come back and show you the paint part. Actually, it's probably going to be on another one that's already dry. I'm going to let this one sit and dry and then we'll paint an, one that I already have ready. Okay, so for the next part, you're going to need a brayer, and I'll show you an alternative if you don't have a brayer. Um, Tony used a smaller brayer, and I have this little one here, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. I'm probably just going to use my regular rubber brayer. This is by Speedball, and it's kind of soft. Some uh, white paint. This is titanium white. And then some kind of a crude color. This is called parchment. Um, most of you have probably seen this at Michael's. And <clears throat> your finished uh, collage. 
So this is one that I had done earlier. It's already dry. And what you're going to do is you're going to be braying on paint in horizontal and vertical ways. So you're going to squirt, oops, whoo, that came out quite quickly. Squirt some on the side. You're going to squirt them side by side. Plop it down here. So, if you don't have a brayer, um, and I'm going to experiment with this too, you can um, use your old credit card maybe to s smooth on the uh, paint. Or if you don't have that, try a TP hold holder, and let's see how that works. So I'm going to uh, start with a little bit of the white on the side here. Another thing is you could always use a paintbrush. You could use a foam brush if you wanted to. I'm just going to take a little bit on the brayer and then kind of roll it here and get some on the brayer. I, oops, I got a little bit of that buff color. And I'm just going to start brayering on. See the cool, <clears throat> it gives it a really cool effect. More. So you don't you don't need a ton as you can see. And the whole point is that you're going to be using this to do a drawing or painting on. Again, though, you don't need to do that. Do a little bit more white. And I'm going to experiment with the. Um, this. Let's see how that goes on there. I'm just going to kind of scrape some on there. And this will be kind of a cool effect. I kind of like that. So if you don't have a brayer, you can use some kind of plastic to spread it on. Let's see how the TP... The key is not adding too much. So we have some on the TP roll and that'll work too. You get these interesting lines on here. I like that. Let me do a little bit more here. Yeah, that that's pretty cool. I like that. And then we'll just let that dry. I'm gonna go back over a little bit with the brayer. Thing you don't want to do is you don't want it to get muddy so at a certain point you're gonna have to stop so I kind of like these big splotches of paint right there and then I'm gonna let it go I'm not gonna paint anymore on here okay then you're gonna just clean this off and we'll, I'll see you when this dries something you can do if you um, when this is still a little wet if you look at it and think oh I wanted more of the background to show you can take a wet paper towel and just kind of take some of the paint off. I wouldn't uh, do too much, but that's a little trick. It's not anything that I, something that I've learned, but um, that's a little trick for you to go back in and just take some of the paint off that if you were too heavy handed with the paint and you still want to see some of the background come up, that's a little trick that you can do. You can use a wet wipe too. Okay, so the uh, I painted quite a few of these envelopes, and um, coffee I coffee dyed the backs of them, and then I drew an image of this angel. And so, um, if you want to see how I do this type of um, drawing, I did a video tutorial, two tutorials back. I think there will be a link. Uh, because this will also be a part of the larger junk journal that I'm making with the altered file folders. It's going to be an insert. 
Um, and so what I thought I would do is, if you would like, I am going to give you a download of the image. So I took her, I traced her, um, and um, I, you can use it if you want to. Um, and I show you how to do the tracing, <clears throat> how to trace the, the image with uh, car carbon paper onto your substrate so that you can um, paint her. You don't have to paint on these. You can uh, collage a, an image of a painting if you want to, or a heart, or you know, something from a magazine maybe that you see. So I don't want you to feel intimidated by that, and that's why I thought it would be nice to have um, this angel, if you'd like, to play with. So I will leave a download below. <clears throat> I hope it comes through anyway. I'm going to scan it, and then um, it should come out as a download for you to trace. So there's going to be two things I want to show you. The, the video is getting quite long, so I don't want to go do too too much more. But um, I do use a. This is a water uh, soluble or watercolor type of pencil, and <clears throat> it's nice because you can draw with it, and then you can do this. So you give it that kind of interesting watercolor look. I'm not gonna. Um, and then. You can uh, go back over it with a permanent pen mark if you want to. Uh, but I'm not at that point yet. So I thought it would be kind of fun to make a dress, put this on her as a dress. So you can just take some uh, scrapbook paper or some digital, a digital download and make a dress. I'm going to distress this so it's not so perfect looking maybe with some uh, sandpaper or um, I might even put tracing paper over it. it gives it kind of a ethereal look we'll see and then I'm going to just glue that down with uh, some gel medium I love these colors. They're so pretty. And I love cabbage roses. Just love them. So I love angels. I believe in angels. And so I'm always, they always kind of end up in my, when I paint. First, though, I wanted to show you, because it's going to take some time to dry, um, because she's an angel, I'm going to be putting a halo around her. I wanted the halo to have um, gold leaf, but I don't have any. I have silver leaf, but I wanted to use gold. So I thought I would play with some of this gold paint that I have and see if I can do something. And I like the way it came out, so I'm calling it a faux gold leaf technique. So you're going to take your uh, credit card. And um, if you don't have a credit card, like I showed you earlier, you can use a uh, a toilet paper roll or some kind of you know flat, heavy duty kind of cardstock. So what what I did was, uh, and I this is just from Nova. I think I've showed you this brand. This is a brand that's close to my house. They they literally have a store close to my house. I think you can go online. I will try to find the website. I'm not sure if they do. Uh, online orders. They're in based in Culver City and it's called Nova Color. Um, but you know you can use any kind of gold paint. Um, try to maybe use one that has more pigment in it, not the cheapy cheapy kind that you can find at Michael's or Joann's, but take a little bit of the paint on your credit card and kind of smush it out. I'm going to do a couple of different layers and it'll give it that kind of torn look that um, you get, you know, when you uh, lay down gold leaf. And I, I don't want it to, like, look 
real perfect. I want it to look like the gold leaf has come off over, you know, centuries. <laughs> um, it's a really, really striking gold color too. It's really very well pigmented. And I just thought I could, I think I'm going to take something that's a little thinner than this. I need to get into some tight areas. Let's see. I have a piece of cardboard here. Here's one. <clears throat> I think the trick with this is just to not put too much on it. Don't make it look too deliberate. Just make it look like when the painting was originally done in the, you know, 16th century, let's say. Um, they had put gold leaf on it, but over the years it has worn off. I'm going to let it dry, um, see how beautiful that is. And at some point I might put real vague lines in it. I'm not sure, but, um, yeah, I like that. <clears throat> so I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to put down the dress. And I'm going to just distress it just a little bit first. This is a sanding block. It looks like it's just smearing the colors. So I'm not sure if that's going to work. I might have to use a piece of sandpaper that's a little bit um, harsh. This one's pretty, pretty uh, <clears throat> fine. I'm going to take some matte medium. You can probably use um, Mod Podge. You just have to be careful when you're using <clears throat> a pencil that um, is activated by moisture uh, that you be you're careful where you put the Mod Podge or the uh, matte medium because it will, you know, smear it. just flipping the excess over and it'll look pretty on this side. I may or may not decorate this part. I'm not sure. This side, I should say, the inside covers. So I'm going to let that dry. Yeah, I think I'm going to add some uh, layers on some parts of this. Oh, I really like that. So the halo is drying, and I wanted to give her more hair here so I'm just taking a pencil holding it at the end here so that I don't have too much control and doing more scribbly kind of hair just kind of pushing down on the pencil and bringing it down to give her some more hair here 
it's probably going to go onto her dress, but this is still drying, so. And then I'm going to go over it with uh, the sketching mark. It's more, like I said earlier, it's more of a, it's good with the watercolor brush, just water. These are her wings over here. I'm just going to darken these a little bit more. And then I will just be taking a little bit of water and um, giving them more depth. And that's a little bit too much. This is a uh, kneaded racer. Kneaded eraser, I should say. Uh, let's see here. And I'm just going to take a little bit of water from this paintbrush and just a little bit. I'm not going to, I don't want it to just become muddy. I still want to see the lines in the hair. Just a real light touch. I'm turning it this way so the shadow is more on the inside of the nose here. And I, this is starting to dry a little bit so I'm going to go back and take this black to outline this here and just take this watercolor brush and move the pencil around a little bit. Something, if you mess something up, you can just go back in and kind of wipe it a little with a, a paper towel. Kind of dragging some of the black into the dress and it gives it a little bit more, it's a little bit more distressed. Now I'm going to work on the angel wings here.
I'm just wiping the black off so I don't keep smearing it. Gotta just be real careful around the details of the eyes because it's so tiny. And I'll probably go in and color her lips a little bit more at some point. In any case, I didn't really want this to become a whole painting video. Um, just kind of started going off on a tangent. But like I said, I do go over it a little bit more in another tutorial that I had just recently done. And I had put too much black on her eyelids, so I'm just taking it off with some water. Okay, I'm gonna uh, go over the gold a little bit more again, because it's dry. And I just like using this. This is easier to use than the, the credit card because it's smaller, so. I'm going over some of the areas that I already did just to um, make it look like they're a little bit thicker. And I'm not going for perfection, like I said earlier. Just have to be careful when you go over the hair. I might have to go back over that anyway. Um, because it'll smear. I'm trying to make it look like the hair is in the forefront and the ha the halo's in the background. So um, in order for me to do that, I, I, I already painted over the hair with the gold, but I'm going to go back in there with a black ink pen at some point when this dries more and just redo the hair a little bit more. It can get a little bit much <laughs> if you don't stop. Okay, so I went ahead and just finished her up. Um, you can see the gold on there. And what I did was I made her hair longer. And I added more lines to the halo just to give it some depth. And I just add a little more color to her cheeks to her skin with some watercolors. These are the watercolors I used. There'll be a link down below if you're, if you're interested in getting these. I like them because they're, they're portable. You can travel with them and they're small. They don't take up a bunch of room. And also all the other things that I use, which I, like I said before, this will, these things were what I used in the tutorial that I showed you how to draw and paint in an old uh, book. <clears throat> Um, let's see what else did I do on here oh I added some background color and I just 
did some more scribbles in her hair. I extended her hair so it was longer. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Also, you will have to add some kind of fixative to your um, painting because uh, like uh, what we were using earlier were water uh, um, soluble. So <clears throat> meaning they could, if they get wet, they'll smear. So you wanna spray it with some kind of fixative. This is what I use. This isn't the only thing you can use, but it needs to be something that is, um, says workable fixative or um, works on pastels, charcoal, and pencil. You can also use it on paintings. Um, I just sprayed like two coats on here and it should be good to go. So um, I think Krylon has something similar to this. It's usually in the artist section in one of the hobby stores. So that's the other thing that you would need to do on this painting. I, after I had turned the camera off, I added some more to her with the Uniball white pen. So I added little dots of light all around her halo and kind of emanating from her halo and then little dots here. and on the sides. This is a technique that I learned from Misty Mon. For those of you familiar with her paintings, she does a lot of little white dots, kind of like an aura. And um, if you have any questions, just let me know. I'm thinking of having a uh, community group. I know some YouTubers, I just saw this actually, have uh, community memberships and they're, some of them are free, some of them you charge. I'm just thinking of having a free one so that you, I can see what you guys are doing. If you want to share um, what you're making inspired by my videos. So, as always, um, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I am trying to get 10,000 subscribers by the, by the end of the summer. And it seems it's working. I think last time I checked, it was at 9,600. So we're almost there. And I'm going to have a giveaway for those of you who follow me loyally. Um, I'm going to have a really nice giveaway for you. And uh, <clears throat> I do have an online class. I have several online classes. But uh, those of you who watch might be interested in my junk journal class. And it's geared towards beginners. And it's over 20 hours of content. And nothing that I teach on YouTube is in that class, really, <laughs> because I think people would be very mad at me if I gave away information for free that they had to pay for. So um, I'll leave the link down below and thank you for watching. See you in the next video.